Chief Thank Bill. you, uh, Mayor Teague and Council, uh, for inviting me to speak with uh, you this evening and with the community this evening. Um, I've certainly received a lot of requests for additional uh, information and comment from the police department on on where we where we are, where we stand, um, how we do things. Um, certainly, a lot of interest about that, and hopefully, we can address some of that tonight. Um, certainly, we won't touch on every question and, and every and every part of departmental operations, and there'll be people who will have more questions and will work to, to answer those questions, but hopefully we can at least get some dialogue started because as you said, Mayor, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the things that's most important and is, is one of the things I believe that as a city and as a city government we're known for. Um, I'd also like to thank you for your leadership in this time. Uh, it has not been simple for our department or for our city. Um, and would like to thank the entire council for its support and direction. Uh, as we walk through difficult and troubling times for not only the community, but as you've said, for the entire nation. Um, this last Friday, I issued a public statement regarding the murder of Mr. George Floyd. I'd like to read that again for those of you who haven't, who have not seen it or heard it. Uh, as I wrote on Friday, the death of Mr. George Floyd at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer is tragic. Like many of you, I watched the video in disbelief, sadness, and frustration as those who took an oath to protect us failed to make good on that promise. This is of great concern to our nation, community, and police department. The manner in which these officers treated Mr. Floyd is inconsistent with how we train police officers to conduct their interactions with the public. As we make it clear in our departmental mission statement, we strive to work in partnership with the community, enhance trust, protect with courage and compassion, and empower victims of crime through excellence and service. The City Council has made it uh, clear in recent years their values and expectations to the department. For example, in 2017, uh, a 2017 resolution reaffirmed uh, the City of Iowa City law enforcement non-discrimination policy, urging the City Manager and Police Chief to provide the department employees with the resources, training, and other support needed for them to effectively build mutual trust with all persons they serve so that they can carry out their duties in the most efficient, productive, and safe manner. In 2016, council passed a resolution rejecting acts of intimidation and supporting a diverse and safe community, reaffirming our community's shared value of compassion, inclusion, respect, and dignity, and our commitment to building an environment and community in which everyone is valued and has an opportunity to thrive. In 2018, the department recognized the need to shift its focus to a more community-based, victim-oriented service model. This shift prompted a new mission statement, which I, which I just read here a minute ago, and I'll read it again. To work in partnership with the community, enhance trust, protect with courage and compassion, and empower victims of crime through excellence and service. As with any mission statement, the ideals put forth are a tall order to accomplish. Yet without actions to back them up, they're just words. And we have worked hard to put these words in action. Partnerships are a big part of building the relationships and enhancing the trust. The department regularly supports and works with community partners. I'll, I'll, I'll name off a few right now. Um, the list is much longer, but uh, here's a few of them. Um, you've seen us out with Coffee with a Cop. You've seen, him at, you've seen us at Martin Luther King Day events, the Seoul Food Dinner, the Sudanese Community Center, South District Neighborhood, Diversity Networking Night at the University of Iowa, LGBTQ liaison officers, which we have that engage the community in, in, in different events, Refugee Immigration Association, collaboration on events and initiatives have occurred with the NAACP regularly over the last several years. The City Manager's Roundtable, the BULBS program, which if you haven't heard about it, is a way that uh, police officers can, can help those who lack funds to fix uh, light bulbs and other minor repairs that might be a problem for them that, that, that prompts them to be uh, stopped by the police, uh, again, to make it so that interaction doesn't happen. Uh, Juneteenth, Pride Festival, neighborhood centers of Johnson County. Uh, I think our faces are, are familiar at many of these events and at many events throughout the city. Um, and we've made that a priority and, and it will continue to be a priority. COVID obviously hasn't helped us much with that, but um, that's, that's who we are and that's who we'll continue to be. 
Uh, and many of these partnerships have been in place for several years. The department has also looked for ways to provide police services through new positions, which allow uh, more personalized victim-oriented services uh, within those. Our downtown liaison officers, neighborhood response officers, and community outreach assistant have all been added in the last few years to intentionally work on building relationships in the community. Um, those have been, have been key and very strategic on our part. They haven't been by happenstance. It hasn't been uh, just to fill a spot. We've really looked for officers and for uh, members of the community who are able to uh, build on the good work that's gone before them. Uh, the police department is a very diverse group, uh, has a very diverse group of officers, and we strive to reflect the community uh, that we serve as we recruit and hire new officers. These young men and women are the future of the department. As such, we carefully choose those who are going to wear the badge in Iowa City. Uh, we insist that they understand our community values and that uh, we understand that not all applicants are going to be a good fit. And if, uh, if that's not the case, um, we, we look to, to move on and, uh, and, and, and find people who are. Once hired, the department works to provide good quality ongoing training. I've received lots of questions about that this week, lots of emails from folks about the training that we do. We seek to find ways to provide consistent recurring training that will assist officers in dealing with the many challenging aspects of the job. And there are many of them. It, it goes well beyond the list that I'll, I'll talk about now, but we certainly recognize that dealing with differences is one of those big challenges. Uh, some of the recent trainings and trainings that, that, that come up for us frequently, um, I'll, I'll give you some, some, some examples here. Uh, cracking the code of social justice, engaging LGBTQ communities, advancing racial equity, unconscious bias, implicit bias, engaging immigrant and refugee communities, crisis intervention, de-escalation techniques, cultural competency. Those are all a big part of what we do. Those last three, the crisis intervention, de-escalation, cultural competency, those are a regular part of the diet of what officers um, are, are, are receiving in the department. And this isn't something that, that came up last month or last year. This has been going on for the last several years. In 2018, the department was awarded over $800,000 in public and private grant funds to help establish best practices for law enforcement agencies nationwide surrounding two relevant issues at the forefront of policing. These funds were used for implementation of a data-driven justice program in Iowa City, as well as programs that address gender bias in response to domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking. Both programs, which uh, from a fund standpoint have, have been coming to a close, have become ongoing and integral parts of the police department operations. The, the, the mission statement that I, I mentioned um, was, was a direct um, outcome of some of the things that went on within the domestic violence grant. The data-driven justice program has been very much a part of the partnerships that we've had with, with the homelessness issue in Iowa City. Um, and has been, has been key to identifying where the services are needed and how they'll be provided. It also has been a part uh, of how we are now making decisions about policing. Um, lots of changes have occurred in that way. Uh, you've heard the term hotspot or micro hotspot policing. Um, we, we try to sort out what the best way is to deploy resources and why. And what's, uh, what, do, what are we doing and why are we doing it and how are we doing it is, is a constant uh, thing that we need to evaluate, and, and the data-driven justice has been a part of that and continues to be how we're going to be looking at things. Uh, we're excited about what that's, what that's going to look like in the future. It's, it's kind of in its infancy, um, uh, not only nationally, but um, um, we're at the forefront of it and have a chance to, to do some things locally that's pretty exciting. Uh, the department also looks for ways to improve um, through a review by outside projects and programs. Um, as you all know, we've been a part of traffic stop studies through St. Ambrose University um, for some time now. Um, that's nothing new. Um, we, we don't often, often tout it this way, but we're one of the few departments in the state that really, really turns inside and out who we stop, um, what, what the demographics are of those stops, 
Um, that's not that's not commonplace, unfortunately. My guess is it will be more so here in the future in other departments, but we've done that for a long time. And, uh, and, and that's a, a part of making us better, and we recognize that. Um, we've also uh, have on the police department and have for the last couple of years had an internal committee, um, our Disproportionate Minority Contact Committee, that looks at the data from the traffic stops, looks at the totality of the issues that we hear from whether it be from the community or internally from our own uh, review of things and looks at how we can do things better. That committee has been in place for a couple of years now. Um, that's not something new that didn't come up yesterday. We work to look at this issue. Finally, uh, we're not a perfect organization. I think we all know that. Um, we understand the importance of holding our officers accountable for their actions. This comes in many forms. Uh, we have a very good group of experienced field supervisors who supervise our officers when they're out doing their job. That's, that's key to this. Frontline supervisors are key to our response and key to our, our success in the field. We also have command staff that have been here for many years. Um, that said, as you know, we're in the process right now of selecting a new police chief. Um, we must carefully fill that position and look for someone who is capable of leading the department uh, in the coming years. And I, and I don't say managing or, 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 or anything like that truly someone who's, who's capable of leading the department in the future. And that's who you as a council and, and the city manager will be looking for. But we also need our community to help us determine and to let us see what our strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, we have a long history of working with our Police Citizens Review Board in reviewing policy and also in handling of complaints. Um, we have more recently uh, collaborated with the NAACP in identifying and addressing issues uh, before they become problems. Uh, these two organizations and, and, and others that I'm not mentioning um, are vital to the health of the department and they're vital to the health of the community that we're able to um, provide that transparency that, that, that the community is looking for. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity to come here and tell you about us. Uh, we don't come to you with all the answers. Um, we're, we're a good organization and we can be better, but we're there for you. And you're, you're going to hear more from someone else here shortly, but, uh, we're dedicated to making this community a great place, just like you are. And, uh, you'll see that in the days to come. Um, I believe that the community and the police department will be better off and be stronger, um, in, as the relationship that we have, uh, builds in the day to come. Uh, with that, I thank you, mayor. And I turn it back over to you.